name is Jacksepticeye? If you want to find out how I got my name, then please go watch this episode of Dinosaur King Commentaries on Indominus Rex 01's channel. And as for those who did, please enjoy the rest of this video. Okay, putting references aside, here is the Dinosaur King Iguanodon from Dinosaur King. I, I just said, this is why I get, get scripts, people. Now, on paper, or like, uh, when I first looked at this, I thought this was going to be one of the less exciting repaints, as it is just two colors. But now that I'm finished, I actually really, really enjoy how this turned out. And the best part is, it was a very easy repaint to do. Like, probably the second easiest repaint ever. The absolute easiest being Mini-Me. Now, in terms of uh, what I did to paint this one, I actually have... If I can just center you, actually. Let me just see if I can center this. There we go. And then from here... Yeah, that works, that works. Actually, what am I doing? I'm making this so complicated. I have, literally, train tracks for this. Just stand there and just be centered. There we go, now you're centered. Why didn't I do that sooner? Yes, hey, now you're using your noodle. Now, in terms of how I painted all this, I actually filmed a good chunk of me myself painting this, uh, this Iguanodon toy. So, let's just, uh, chop chop, let's get into that. Now, the first thing I did was just coat the whole Iguanodon in white paint. Painting the whole thing white, every nook and cranny, until the whole thing is just pale white. A smart thing to do would have been to probably- I could have just left the stripes not- as in, like, the, 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 the base stripes on the Iguanodon not white. But then I just thought, nah, I'll just paint over that too, because I don't know exactly know where the black parts are gonna go. Except, as you can see right here, the black parts and uh, the regular stripes kinda just, uh, they already, like, it just covers it up. So there was no point in me painting it white. But either way, you'll live and learn. I painted the whole thing white anyway. And uh, once I got, I had, like, it took multiple coats because white is one of those colors that takes a while to stick on. So there was a lot of, like, uh, a lot of painting to do before I finally got all the white into it. I almost considered not like just dry brushing the white on because the base paint, the, the base, the factory colors already look pretty nice on the Iguanodon, especially when you add the white, it already looks, it looks okay. But I thought I was, I, I just assumed I was going to like dry brush another coat of gray onto it later, so it didn't matter, so I painted the whole thing white anyway. Well, after I let it dry for like a few minutes because it was very thin coat of paint, so it doesn't take that long for it to dry. It takes like 10 minutes for it to like fully settle. I would, I recommend waiting longer for it to really settle in the dryness, but uh, I'm impatient and I, I wanted to get this boy done in one day. And it like, it was, again, it was a very quick repaint. Afterwards, I put on the black, which is, black is a lot easier to throw onto a toy because black will just stick on immediately. You just put on a, a dash of black and it's gonna stick. You just can just... So I lathered all the parts that need to be black in black, including the beak here, which is actually uh, a much... If I can just zoom in on it. Yeah, the, the beak, also black. I, re I know the beak is actually one of the few parts that are painted on the Iguanodon, but uh, the Dinosaur King Iguanodon has a black beak. So I was gonna repaint that anyway. I painted on the, well, all the body parts, the head, a bit of the eye, the, the part of the front legs, including that peg, which is, uh, well, it means I'm never gonna move. Thankfully, Iguanodon is one of those creatures where it's very unlikely I'm gonna actually use the leg joint like that, which is good, because it's gonna end up with that scraping feature, and it's like, you know, it's, well, if, if you want reference, then, you know, pegs, e even when you, like, uh, paint over them and you th throw on like the Mod Podge and the sealer to put it in, it's still gonna rub off no matter what you do. You would have to get a knife and cut and trim it down in order for it to work, but I don't like the idea of like putting sharp objects to my toys, otherwise it's like, oh no, what if I accidentally break it? Then I'm, because this is, these Parasaurolophus aren't exactly common to come by. I know there's Hammond Collection ones and I could repaint that, but uh, y you know what I mean. Like maybe it's not Parasaurolophus, what if it's Edmontosaurus I was repainting, and then I end up making a mistake while trimming down the thing, the, the peg here. I'm never gonna be able to get another Edmontosaurus because they only made one. And because toy prices are crazy, the one on Amazon probably costs like a million dollars now. I think the most difficult part to paint was probably the striping on the tail. And, uh, well, of course that was because, uh, that was because the brushes I use aren't exactly the best brushes. So it was very difficult for me to get, like, actual good-looking stripes. Some of them came out looking very, uh, unstripe-like. 
like very rounded, like the teeth on the Hammond collection. Eventually, I did get there, and the uh, the iguanodon was fully was fully painted black and white. But that looks pretty boring for a repaint because it just looks like a black and white dinosaur with not much that much to it. Which is why the final step included a uh, light gray and dark gray paint, like li a light a very light gray to dry brush onto the white, and a very dark gray to dry brush onto the the black paint. And honestly, another dry brushing of light gray paint to uh, put, throw on to the black paint again, to really help those uh, details pop. And then after that, I added like the red eye, and the eye is like very annoying to do because one, I have to use red paint and red paint does not cling very well. And then I have to add a pupil, which I do have a method to it, but because the Iguanodon toy has very small eyes, it was very difficult to do. Well, in fact, I had to wait for the red eye to dry before I could put on the black paint, the black dot. So I had to, so I started painting the obsidian claws before I got to that because the Dinosaur King Guadalajara has black claws, which means I can use the obsidian claws because those look really cool. And then after that, I sealed it all up with the the the, the Mod Podge, the the varnish, the thing that makes it feel like an official toy. And boom, it's done. The Guadalajara is ready. Now you, you can see right away the difference between like if I just left it black, you wouldn't be able to see all of that scale detail coming off of it. I mean. You can see it here, but it's like, it's all the same color, so it's not as apparent as it would be. But here, you can see all that scale detail. You can see just every single scale that was on this thing's body, especially on the tail and the top of this head. I, I just love the way dry brushing can, like, dry brushing sounds like such a, a, meaning, a meaningless thing, since it's like, you just... You rub off most of the paint and then you just uh, brush it on anyway, like what's that gonna do? And it actually does quite a lot for the toy itself and making it look like just a, a very good thing. It's the same case with my blue Pyroraptor where, uh, well I guess it's not picking up that well, but it does, it, you can sort of see the scale, the, the, the dry brushing on the scale leg on, on, on its leg and a bit on the fi- um, if it would focus, if it would focus. A bit on the face, mostly on the top of the head. But it's not as apparent on the Pyraptor as it is on the Iguanodon here. And just like that, Jacksepticeye is ready to mingle with the rest of the herd! Terry's in for a bad time! Now, I wouldn't say this is a perfect repaint, because there are a few things that bug me. For starters, I got a bit of that, dro that, that darker gray onto the white, and it doesn't look as good on, on, the, on the white as it does on the black. So it does make it look like very, like this is this is the lighter gray, which also looks a bit. I guess it does look a bit dirty. It makes it look like it was rolling around in mud. But you know, you know, I I think I would prefer a very dirty looking iguanodon than just like the base white, which makes it look kind of meh. Another thing. So look at this eye. This eye is this eye turned out very nice. But even like the footage I filmed. You can see I struggled to like put on the pupil because of how small the eye is. And the, the, the other side of the eye turned out looking like this. So he's looking down on one side. It looks, it, does, it looks okay on this side. But then it does mean that when you try to get forward facing shots, he's uh, got a bit of a derpy expression. So yeah, not, not the best. So don't look at him straight forward. Just, in fact, that's a, that's a re reoccurring theme with Hadrosaurs. Never stare a duck-billed dinosaur straight down the face. Especially when they're from the Hammond Collection. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Iguanodon's not a Hadrosaur, but I, they're, part, they're all part of the, uh, they're grouped in with the other duck-bills. Now it's just a question of, what am I gonna repaint this other Iguanodon? Well, I actually had a plan. If you recall, the Dinosaur King Acrocanthosaurus, which we nicknamed Baragon, ends up getting a super upgraded form in his own special episode. Well, that's known as the Super Alpha Dinosaurs, and while that is the only Super Alpha Dinosaur to show up in the show, in the game, there are lots of Alpha Dinosaurs, which they all have these... They're basically dinosaurs that are already in the game, but they're recolored to have this special pinkish hue to them. And the Iguanodon is just one of these dinosaurs. So 
So that's what this Iguanodon is for. I'm eventually going to turn it into a Super Alpha Iguanodon. I also have a plan to paint a Super Alpha Irritator, if you can uh, see her back there. And a Super Alpha Rajasaurus. I'm probably going to do Rajasaurus first, because this color scheme is just kind of mid. So this repaint took about like uh, three hours, give or take. And uh, within that, I had enough time to get working on some other projects. So I'm already working on uh, the Ampelosaurus, the Dinosaur King Ampelosaurus. So that one's already getting coated in blue. I also had some time to re do a bit of uh, TLC on Grimm. As you can see, she has a much brighter hue of green. I mean, not on the face. The face is still that uglier shade of green from before. But now with this proper shade of green, she looks so much better. And for that one person who kept commenting that Grimm is a boy, according to the Jurassic Wiki Wiki, Limbo is the boy of the group. So if you have a problem with me calling Grimm a girl, then take it up with the Jurassic Wiki Wiki. I haven't coated her with Mod Podge yet, so uh, the green is still able to be scraped off if I'm not careful. But uh, yeah, just wanted to bring her down and show how just how much better she looks with the right shade of green. Well, again, I'm not sure if it's like the right shade of green, but it's a more vibrant shade of green, so it, do it does help it so much more. Okay, but enough about you. This is about Jacksepticeye, the Iguanodon. Except I don't have much else to say, because that's the end of the video. I've talked about everything I need to say about the Iguanodon, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you next week, where I'll be showing off how I repainted Thomas the Ampelosaurus again. These nicknames all come from Dinosaur King commentaries. If you want to find out how we came up with these, just watch the show. Best part is, I can still use the action feature! Oh, that felt stiff. I think the, the Mod Podge might have sealed the legs up for a minute there. I think it also sealed up the arm. Like, this arm is completely stiff now. This one, uh, th that one's also quite stiff. I mean, this one could still move, but that one is completely immobile now. But I'm okay, because I really don't plan on uh, moving the legs around on the Iguanodon too much.